Welcome to the Fat Emperor podcast. I'm your host, Ivor Cummins. We're supported by the Irish Heart Disease Awareness Charity, which advocates a simple CT scan to reveal your CAC score. So know your score and take action to prevent that premature heart attack. Everything you need to know will be right here. So very good. So this continuous glucose monitor, a massively powerful tool and the watches are coming out now and people are getting CGMs and the the hackers, biohackers. Well, what you've got now, you've got this little device where you actually get um, push measurements too from the CGM. So rather than having to swipe, it'll actually push it to your phone every five minutes. So you don't even have to swipe. All right. So if you drop a filthy kebab, you know, there's no (laughs) hiding. Well, I I love the continuous glucose meter Mm. because there's no hiding from it. So yeah. I had a patient a little while ago and, you know, I, I get my patients to do food diaries and I, I can try and understand their patterns. And I was looking at her bloods and I was looking at her food diary and, and my filter in my brain was working that said, you know, just be careful what you say. Don't call her a liar. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just sort of saying, so I'm just having trouble reconciling your results with your food diary. And I, I just had a puzzled look and she mm. looked at me like I was an idiot. And she said, I've been doing a food diary for 10 years and I'm the only person who ever sees it and I still lie on that food diary. What makes you think I'm going to be honest on a food diary that you're going to see? And I thought, you know what, that makes perfect sense. Human nature. People can lie to themselves, but you can't mm. lie to a CGM. No, and that's why it's better. And anyone, anyone who comes in with a high calcification score in the CAC scan or has serious heart disease become symptomatic for or any other reason one of the first things they they should do is get a cgm because i know they're going to get certain meds and all and they're going to change their diet and hopefully they understand low carb is needed or keto along with many other things yeah but a cgm is the first thing that a post mi person or a person who suddenly got a really high score needs 100 percent. yeah i mean look it's a no brainer clinical like. utility. I mean, for me, it's absolutely been a game changer. And I've actually steered away from um, pushing ketone testing as much because what happens? What happens if you have somebody come in and they have a one hour insulin of say 200. So mm-hmm. quite or 300, but you know, very, very insulin resistant. How likely are they going to be able to enter ketosis, even if they're on 20 mm-hmm. grams a day? Tough. Not on God's green earth. Mm-hmm. They're not, but they can still lose weight by being lower carb. So it becomes more important. And if we have the goalpost that, that they're striving for being ketosis, they're going to become dissatisfied. If we set the goal coast, goalpost is something they can achieve, and that's a flat blood sugar, then that's something that they're actually much more in control of. Now, there's some circumstances. Some people have a horrible dawn phenomenon, and yeah. some people, they have autoimmune diseases and... I mean, you know, the, the difficulties in people on prednisone or other corticosteroid medications, it, it's absolutely amazing. I should show you some of the traces. Mm. Um, I mean, in, in medicine, we get told, oh, they, they make it much more, they make it harder for you to get blood sugar control, rah, rah, rah. But we pay lip service to it. When you actually see it, so you might be on 10 gram, milligrams of pred, and it might be pushing your blood sugar up to 15 for five hours a day or something. You know, the changes you see are just huge. And I think as certainly as a doctor, I had no concept that it was so massive. And I mean, we blame you and say, well, you're going to have to just try a little bit harder now you're on steroid to control your sugar. You know, <laughs> maybe, mm. maybe, you know, do a sliding scale a bit more often. Bollocks, it's never going to work. Mm. So you need to get them off these agents, or ideally. And, and Well, I've got a patient at the moment. She came to see me on 40. I had an email because um, uh, I'm sharing her care. She's actually not from Sydney. Um, and she's down to 15 so far without any ex- any flares. She's got a condition called polymyalgia rheumatica, um, which if you if you drop it down too quickly, you get a, a big flare and uh, not mm. a pleasant state. But, you know, even the drop from 40 to 15 is, you know, it's, it's made a big difference. But the residual 15 is still causing her a hell of a lot of troubles. So ideally, by adopting the optimum diet and beginning to fix all of the dysfunction that's going on there, then you can go lower later on maybe in in those meds well what it is so Mm. i am actually i'm a big fan now of uh uh, i guess uh, what's more commonly known as autoimmune protocol diets using uh, restriction Mm. of lectins l-e-c-t-i-n-s not the and so we see often 
um, in do, uh, establishing that kind of diet in these people actually allows us to accelerate the dose reduction a little bit quicker than what would otherwise have expected. Now that's a fascinating topic, fascinating topic in and of itself. Actually, I was just chatting. I did a podcast this morning with Michaela Peterson. Mm. We had a great chat, obviously an extreme case of autoimmune, but autoimmune is everywhere. And cardiovascular disease now essentially can be looked at as an autoimmune disease. So yeah. many more diseases. You it mentioned is. Alzheimer's. So maybe let's talk about autoimmunity catastrophe in the world today and the types of foods that can help trigger it. Well, before we do, oh. let's just talk about the craft test and lectins. Right. So, I mean, lectins, and a lot of people don't realize this, so say wheat germ or gluten can actually bind to the insulin receptor. And it binds to it in a way that it activates it for a, a lot longer, a, a prolonged duration compared to just straight insulin. Mm. And so, if you've uh, had people who were, um, and I've got lots of patients who have been on a keto diet that's been heavily plant-based, um, you know, a few lectins in there, and when they've gone and cut out a lot of those lectin sources, they've lost a hell of a lot of weight, upwards of 10 kilos, effortlessly. 20 pounds, 25 pounds, yeah, yeah. American units. So, and I think it's uh, this impact of the the uh, the lectins on the insulin receptor and also the uh, lectins have been shown to create leptin l-e-p-t-i-n mm. resistance which is a big issue so if you combine activation of your insulin pathways and leptin resistance then you can see how these lectins mm. can be so problematic l-e-c-t-i-n-s yeah. now they also directly attack the lining of the arteries, the glycocalyx, and many other things. Maybe speak yeah. a little on that. So the definition of a lectin is that it's a carbohydrate binding protein. And on the surface of our cells, we actually have little what we call proteoglycans. So little proteins with sugar on the tip. And as you know, sugar is a carbohydrate. Mm. So if you're a carbohydrate binding protein and you see a sugar that's attached to the surface of the cell, what you're going to do? Mm. You're going to attach to it. And I mean, it obviously requires the, the correct receptor binding affinity. So not every lectin will bind to every proteoglycan, but a yeah. lot of them will. And this process of attaching to it damages it. So, I mean, we can have a look at it, what it does from the, if it attaches to the glycocalyx in the gut, or we can have a look at what it does if it attaches a glycocalyx in a blood vessel. Either way, both steps of attachment will damage that lining. And they could be extremely deleterious, not just a mild impairment or problem, but really severe damage to crucial membranes and, and components. Well, let's take the mm. gut. So leaky gut syndrome. Mm. So a lot of people don't realize that gluten or gliadin is actually a lectin. And I mean, and that will also, that will induce leaky gut. That will allow the lining of the the intestine to become more permeable to its contents. So if you diet, if you eat these lectins mm -hmm. um, and you have intestinal permeability, then they'll be able to cross into the circulation and meet the immune system. Um, bacteria in the gut that are normally there, that are normally confined to the gut, will be able to enter and meet mm -hmm. the immune system. And here's the problem, and this is where autoimmune disease gets triggered, is that the immune system will identify a fragment of a, a bacterial capsule or a, uh, a lectin, and it will mount an immune response against it because it's a foreign pathogen. That's fair enough. Mm. And then you have these what are called antibodies, which they're, they're sort of like little, uh, think of it like a searchlight, you know, in, in a bombing raid. And you, you just want to lock onto it. And these lectins will identify something for destruction or these antibodies will identify something for destruction. Mm. Now, what happens if the, uh, the antigen or the, the particular molecular pattern that the immune system is identifying on a lectin, what happens if that is replicated on the surface of a healthy tissue cell? Yeah, like in type 1 diabetes. We then have something mm. called molecular mimicry, mm. and you end up initiating t tissue destruction of a healthy cell. So, And that's the basis of autoimmune diseases. So um, you, you basically need to have three things line up. You need to have picked the wrong parents. Mm -hmm. You have a genetic susceptibility, and that's a big one. That, that's quite important. You need to then have uh, increased intestinal permeability. And then you also need to have 
passage of substances across the intestine like bacterial fragments or lectins that will induce this molecular mimicry type response. And uh, you have that and then depending on what particular um, antigen you mounted a immune reaction to, um, your immune disease could target the beta islet cells in the pancreas, it could target a nerve mm. sheath cell, it yeah. could target a kidney cell. I mean, you know, there's a, you know, uh, manifestations are absolutely protein. Absolutely. And of course, although the genetic component is important, if you remove the environmental one and that never occurs, chances are you'll never develop the autoimmune condition. It, yeah. Do you think it's it's requisite to have the environmental insult that triggers the molecular mimicry. In, in other words, no one is genetically predetermined to get the autoimmune yeah. or, or at least very few. I don't look, no, I, I'm not, not sure. a, I don't know, yeah, but you enough. can get a damn big reduction. So hmm. I'll, I'll pick a condition, Parkinson's disease. So this is a disease of the neurons in the brain that secrete a neurotransmitter called dopamine. So, that is actually likely to be caused by lectins. And it, this sounds like a crazy convoluted story. So what happens is you actually have these lectins, they pass through the intestine um, and they, they end up um, from the stomach. They can actually enter a nerve called the vagus nerve, which travels all the way up to the brain, and they can ascend up the nerve to the brain, to the brain cells that secrete the dopamine, and essentially cause dopamine and uh, uh, Parkinson's disease. And that sounds like such a, a ludicrous kind of explanation. So there would be an easy way to test it, right? So you'd cut the vagus nerve. That's the highway that the, mm, these lectins yeah. are using to ascend to the brain. So if that were the case, you could just simply cut that and you, uh, you shouldn't get Parkinson's disease anymore. So the Danes did a study. It was between, uh, I think it was 1972 and 1995. So everybody who had this operation called a vagotomy, where they cut the nerves, um, they put them into a registry and they compared them to a, an equivalent control group for the rate of Parkinson's disease. And they followed them for like over 20 years. And they found that the rate of Parkinson's disease was reduced by 47%. Mm. And when they've actually done studies in uh, animals, I think it might've been dogs, they actually gave them uh, lectins and something else to increase their intestinal permeability. And they actually labeled these lectins. So they, were, they made them immunofluorescent so you could actually see them. Mm. And then they euthanized them. And when they uh, biopsied the brain, they could actually see this P lectin that they'd fed them was now sitting on the dopamine secreting neurons in the brain. Wow. Cross the blood brain barrier. Yeah, well, right. here's the thing. Mm. So very similar, the same pathway that intestinal permeability is caused by it's the upregulation of a, a, a something called zonulin, mm. which then releases the tight junctions oh, or the yeah. proteins that hold the cells together in the gut. You know, mm. zonulin works in the brain as well. You know so, that that can work on the blood brain barrier. Right. So even the BBB is subject to zonulin. Yes. Loosening the, the junctions. Yes. Wow. I, I wasn't actually sure of that at all. So lectins are a huge problem, but but in plant foods, there are many lectins spread throughout the whole plant world. So who knows which person is going to get an autoimmune problem mm. relating to which plant world Luck food? Luckily, so there's over uh, 119 um, uh, plant sources of lectins mm. described at last, the uh, last paper I read. There's probably more, but yeah. you know, they, they, that's, that's still a lot. I mean, they're, they're oh. quite a bewildering variety but we know where a lot of the harmful ones come from. So peanut gluten and wheat germ gluten and um, soybean gluten and mm -hmm. um, Soy. phytohemagluten, that's a particularly good one, that's from uh, red kidney beans. You know what, if you feed a rat 1% of raw kidney bean for two weeks, you'll kill it. Thanks for tuning in guys. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see my subscribe button in the middle of the screen, a free viewing of the Widowmaker movie on the far right, and myself and Dr. Gerber's book, Eat Rich, Live Long, on the left.